Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Little Talks with Big Nikki. I am your host, Big Nikki. Uh, today's podcast is going to be talking about reputations and everything that goes along with that, handling what you hear about others, handling what you hear about yourself, and how these kind of intertwine um, both personally and professionally. So we're going to get into that today. Uh, roll intro. <music> Hey, this is Little Talk with Big Nikki. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. I hope you're all doing well today. And we are going to be talking about reputations today. This is something that kind of got going uh, in my thought process because of uh, a situation that happened recently to me. And I wanted to talk about this, think about this. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate reputations affect every single one of us. Um, so I was thinking about, uh, not that I'm a big Taylor Swift fan, but I mean, I don't mind some of her stuff. Her best album, in my opinion, was the Reputation album. So I uh, listened to that probably more than any of her other stuff. And I was thinking about um, her song Endgame, and Ed Sheeran has a part in his verse where he's like, my reputation precedes me. And uh, Taylor Swift in the chorus is, uh, was saying like big reputation, like you and me have big reputations. Um, so just thinking about kind of what Ed Sheeran was saying in terms of your reputation precedes you. So before anyone who doesn't know you meets you, if somebody you know knows them, uh, that person is going to give their opinion on you. They're going to talk about your character, maybe your work ethic, if it's in a professional work setting, um, things like that. So I wanted to talk about this because of the situation that happened to me where, um, I'll get into it, but it, it had to do with kind of me knowing someone, introducing them to somebody else I knew and and how all that kind of went down. So, um, but the point that I want to talk about first is handling what you hear about others. So this is something that we all have to deal with at one point or another where we, I don't know. I don't know how I want to say it, but we like know somebody there again, who knows somebody else. And that person tells us something about this other person. Um, and you, I believe you need to find out for yourself if this is actually true. Um, mainly if it's someone like you're kind of a acquaintance with, like it's not someone, you know, super well, you're not like super good friends with them, but you still know them enough to be like, okay, they could be telling the truth. But the thing you have to be care about, careful about is Everybody has their own experience with everybody else. So that means that that person, for whatever reason, could have a negative uh, feeling towards a certain person because of their experience with them. Maybe they dated. Maybe they, you know, and it, and it didn't end well or something like that. That doesn't necessarily mean that for you, that person would be a bad person. It just means like that to the other person, the feelings are not always positive. So I think you need to watch out for that and take everything somebody says to you about somebody else with a grain of salt, unless that person um, is super trustworthy. I think you need to take their word for it. If that person that's telling you something about someone else is one of your closest people, like a, a parent, a significant other, like one of your best friends, then I would say proceed with caution on interactions with that other person that they um, have told you things about. And it's not necessarily, I don't want to make this sound like we just all go around all the time, like bad mouthing people, but there are certain people in certain situations there again, whether it is personal or professional, that you you should tell the other person um, about. You know, if you hear like one of your best girlfriends being like, oh yeah, like this guy, like he asked me out on a date, 
And maybe that guy asked you or another one of your friends that you know, but this girl, you know, doesn't out on a date and you heard kind of like how he was, you would warn them. Like, that's what you do. That's like a friend code. That's girl code, in my opinion. Um, you would be like, hey, like, listen, you can go on a date with this person, like go for it. But I just want you to know, I heard this. And I think that's good too when you are the one telling someone about somebody else is that you allow them to take what you are saying with a grain of salt and you allow them to leave the door open to make their own judgments. Be like, hey, I heard this. I personally would proceed with caution or I would do this or I maybe wouldn't go there, but that's me. And like that way you're doing your job as a friend, as someone who cares about them, as someone who loves them and you are trying to protect them or tell them what you know, but you're still letting them make their own decisions in their own, um, paint their own picture, I should say, of this said person. So yeah, that's my advice when it comes to handling what you hear about others from somebody else is, you know, Proceed with caution, but kind of take take the opportunity if you're willing um, to explore that for yourself and see if, you know, maybe the other person just had a bad experience, they're being kind of exaggeratory um, or hyperbolic, or if this is really what this person is about and what this person's like. Um, I think it's important to find out for yourself. I was in a situation a couple years ago where something like this kind of happened where I had heard certain things from somebody else about this person, but I was like, well, that's like not how they really talk to me or that's not how they treat me or, you know, whatever. Um, and so I was like, there was like bad blood kind of on both sides about each other. Um, and so I was like, okay, like they, obviously this is a situation where negative feelings are <laughs> all over the place. Um, towards each other um and so I took the risk to find out for myself and I think that person was right <laughs> as I came to find out um so I, I found some things out you know down down the line a little bit um that I didn't know in the beginning but I still um even though it wasn't like the greatest situation ever to be in like it's not like anything drastic happened and I still feel like okay I know now for myself that this is how this person is and behaves and it's, you know, but I found that out for myself. Um, and I didn't just write somebody off because of what I heard about them from somebody else. So that kind of brings me to my second point of handling what others may hear um, about you. So um, your reputation does precede you and you interact and come into contact with a lot of different people, um, especially if you're somebody like me who's really extroverted and you like to make new friends and like go places, you meet a lot of people and not everybody's going to like you. And if you walked up to everyone you've ever met, not all of them are going to say the most positive and nicest things about you. Um, it's just probably not going to happen that way um, because, you know, a, an interaction happened that maybe they misinterpreted or, you know, tempers were flying in that moment like you just you don't know um that doesn't mean that that person's always that way but there again if that's the only version of you that somebody saw then that's what they would tell somebody else about you um and how you behave and how you act so hopefully what you have to you know hope for is that anyone hearing about you, maybe if it's not in the most positive light, that they would do the same to you as what I talked about before of finding out for themselves, being like, okay, I hear you. Um, I hear like what you're saying and like, you know, taking it with a grain of salt, but saying, I'm still going to give this person a chance. Let me at least meet them or talk to them and like get my own vibe on them. And like my story I just shared before from a few years back, like, your vibe with someone initially might be like good and then things turn turn around real quick. Um, just depending on the person, the situation that might come in. The, I mean, I think that even goes like for dating someone. Like you have to be with a person for 
at least six months to really know them because life will happen and life experiences will show you different sides of a person, not just, you know, them on their best behavior. So I think, you know, hoping that people take what they've heard about you with a grain of salt and they're still willing to give you a chance um, because there again, you might've made somebody mad and, but that's not really a reflection on you um, or, you know, they see a, a situation that happened one way and you see it another way. and you guys just didn't get along in the end and you just didn't vibe that doesn't mean that that person's a bad person or you're a bad person it all has to be taken within context um and then i think too when when and if you know somebody heard something about you if you know that that person knows something that maybe doesn't paint you in the best light or maybe they even say like hey so and so kind of told me that you did this or said this um, I think it's good to address it, um, if needed, if it's appropriate in that situation. I mean, obviously, you know, if it's a professional thing, maybe, maybe don't address it. I mean, I guess it depends what it is and if that person potentially hiring you would like know or something, um, maybe don't address it. But especially in a, in a personal relationship, I would address it if it's needed um, without making the other person like sound bad, like just say like, Hey, yeah, like, you know, we kind of were going out for a couple weeks and then this kind of happened and they did this to me and I didn't really appreciate that. So I said this, um, you know, and, and especially when it's things in the past, that's the thing is like people grow, people mature. Um, it's funny because there was just, uh, recently something that happened where someone that I went to high school with like friend requested me and I like remembered this instance where I was because I was kind of like why are they friend requesting me because I was like we kind of had like a run-in like where we butted heads and I in my opinion did absolutely nothing wrong and they kind of came at me and targeted me um, because I was trying to do the right thing and stand up for somebody else um, but but then I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, well that was what, four or five years ago now? And I was like, you've grown and you've changed. So they've hopefully, and you would like to think that they've grown and they've changed. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, if they want to be friends on Facebook, sure. Like, let me, I'll, you know, I approved it because, you know, even though you had that like moment of like, oh, like I remember like how you made me feel in the situation, it's like, Am I really going to hold that over that person for the rest of their life when A, it wasn't like in the grand scheme that big of a deal? Um, You're never necessarily going to forget things that people did to you, said to you, but that doesn't also mean that you have to think of them in that way for the rest of eternity. You know, I think it's, it's personal growth and better for you to be like, okay, they said this to me, I really didn't like it, didn't appreciate it, didn't make me feel good, but, you know, I've grown up and, you know, moved on from behaving in a certain way, and they probably have too, and kind of let the bygones be bygones. Um, There's not always need for an apology necessarily. Um, There again, depends on the situation, depends on the context of what we're talking about, but There's not always going to be an apology. I don't think there always needs to be an apology, especially with something that happened years ago, you know, um, getting back to like you addressing the situation, like being like, yeah, you know what? Like own it, own your past mistakes. I'm, I'm a big proponent for that. Like if someone came up to me and they're like, Hey, like you talked to me like this, um, four years ago, uh, or six years ago. And you like said this to me and that really hurt my feelings. I'd be like, you know what? I'm so sorry. I remember, or maybe I don't saying what I said, but it's like, I'm not the same person anymore. And I would not treat you that way now. And I'm sorry I did before I was mature enough to, you know, understand like what I was doing in, you know, hurting you in that moment. Um, it doesn't excuse the behavior. I think the worst thing you can do is like deny, um, something you said when you know that you did something you shouldn't do now there again there's always cases where there was a 
a disagreement and you see it one way and the other person sees it another way. And you know, if you truly, I'm like a big proponent, if you truly feel like you did nothing wrong, um, if you truly feel like this is your side of the story, like this is what happened, this is like how it went down, then stand by that. You don't, I am also a proponent that you don't always owe everyone an apology. Like you, you don't. You don't always have to explain. You don't always have to apologize. Um, so there again, in the appropriate situations, you have to decide, should you address it with this person? Explain to them what happened. They're again, not making the other person out to be bad. Like, don't do that. Those like, they talk, um, getting kind of into the professional side, they talk about when you go in for like an interview, don't like bad mouth your like boss, even from like a past job that you don't work at anymore, because then it kind of shows like your conflict, um, with like authority, even though you could have no problem with authority and your boss really was a jerk. Like that could totally be the case, but like you're not supposed to talk about it to a possible new employer just because of how it could make you look. So don't try to save your own skin by making the other person look worse. That doesn't help either because you just end up making yourself look worse. Um, so moving into a professional thing, which kind of brings me into why I'm talking about this um, and how this all kind of got going in my head, I guess, is the fact of reputation professionally. So I think it's like one thing to have a reputation um, in, in like your personal life amongst friends, um, acquaintances, people you meet, you know, things like that. But it's another thing to have a reputation professionally because this is your livelihood, this is your career, your job, and how people perceive you can be the difference between struggling to get work or having so much work you have to turn it down. Um, I always say that you should give the best of yourself to anybody you're working for, even if you are not getting paid. And here's why I will give you two very specific examples. Um, the first is I did, um, I did an event, I, I photographed an event about a year ago now, it was last June, um, for somebody that I knew volunteers with this organization, they're nonprofit. And he said, Hey, they're looking for a photographer. Like, can I, you know, hook you guys up, like give them your info. And I was like, Oh my gosh, absolutely. Would love to hear about the opportunity. No talk about payment was not expecting to be paid at all. Um, I did, I did the race. It was like a lot of fun. It was a beautiful day. I got to meet, you know, people, there was like families there. Um, it was just fun and I shot it, edited, you know, the photos within two weeks is usually my turnaround time and sent it to them and they were like so happy with them. They were like, oh my gosh, these are great. And they ended up giving me like a hundred dollar Amazon gift card, which I was like, oh my gosh, you did not have to do that. Like was not expecting anything out of this just, you know, to do it. And I'm telling the story from the standpoint of like, don't take free work. <laughs> Like, I'm usually a big proponent of if you have an internship, you need to be paid. If you have a job, you need to be paid. If you're doing something for someone that you're, you know, providing a service, especially if it's more of like a skilled center service or something, you need to get paid. Like, I'm a big proponent, like, get your money. But I will say there are a few instances where it was, it was like, you know what, like, you're a nonprofit. I would never have done that for, like, a multi-million dollar corporation. I would have never like done something like that for free, but they're like a local nonprofit. And I was like, yeah, totally. Like, let me just volunteer my time by taking photos. But anyway, they gave me the Amazon gift card, which I was like, that's so sweet of them. Did not have to do that at all. And they ended up contacting me again um, to do another event. And they did pay me like my rate. Like I said, like what I was going to charge. And they were like, no problem, like paid me so happy with the photos again, asked me back again. So it like just, and, and, and you know, it was, yes, it was like the, the photos that they were happy with, which like so glad that's always like a great feeling when you can deliver something um, that you do and you know, people are happy with the final product. But it's also like, 
me giving the best of myself. Like I, it wasn't like I emailed them after the first thing was like, hey, so like, where's my money? Or like, am I gonna get paid for this? Or like, whatever. It was just like, I'm not talk, you know, I'm not gonna bring it up. Like I have no problem doing this for free. And it like turned into more work, which turned into more money. So it it's also like you, it's your personality. It's what your character represents. Um, and, and that, you know, and then it was crazy because one of their staff ended up being on the Zoom call. Um, I won like this excellence in marketing award through the Rotary Club. And she was like, um, oh my gosh, like congrats, Nicole. And then she was like, Nicole's like a great photographer. Um, she's done like all these events for us, like da da da. And it was like so, it was so nice because then you know, like if I needed a referral of like, you know, oh, like, you know, I can shoot events or whatever. If I try to, you know, do that for someone else and they were like, oh, well, have you done this before? I could easily call those women up and be like, hey, you know, I'm trying to do this job for this company or person. Can you just like give them a referral? And I have no doubt that it would be a good one. So it's like my reputation just, you know, as a, a good photographer in their eyes, and as you know, a good, decent human being, um, and how I treated them and went about doing business with them, can you know just escalate in a good way. Um, the same can be true in the bad way. Like if it were bad, it can if I like treated them poorly or whatever, it could escalate in the other direction, which isn't good. Um, the second recommendation I say this for is like giving the best of yourself, um, so that people who know you will recommend you. Um, and will tell people that you have like a good reputation with them is um, in the fact of again like I was doing this um, video for a friend of mine for free but that doesn't mean that I did any less work or you know tried to do my best um, or slacked off just because it was free because it was still like you know what I don't know who's here on this shoot I don't know who I'm going to meet. I don't know who's going to like remember me. And it's like if another shoe comes up that does pay and they're like, yeah, we're looking for a PA or a director's assistant or da da da. I would want them to be like, oh my gosh, I worked on this shoe with Nicole and she was like so good, so helpful, so friendly. Like I'm like, I recommend we bring her on. Now, this gets into my second point about giving the best of yourself. In the case that somebody sticks their neck out for you and recommends you to somebody, I'm saying this especially in a professional setting, you do not want to be the person or the reason why somebody looks bad. I never, ever, 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 and I'm saying this especially in a professional manner, I never want to be the reason why somebody looks at somebody else and says, your credibility is down. You recommended Nicole to me and she did not deliver. She was not what you said she was. She did not do the job you said she could do. She was this, she was that. I never want to be the reason that somebody else looks bad because they stuck their neck out and risked recommending me for something and then I don't perform or I don't live up to the standard or the expectation that was set. Never want that to be me and you should not want that to be you. Um, that is not a good look. Um, I, I do not take lightly and so this brings me into my next topic or my next point about reputations. Um, and recommendations is I do not take lightly when people recommend me to somebody. If somebody is willing to say, you should hire Nicole because she can do this and she's like this and that person hires me, I feel like I owe that person like the world. I mean, especially right now, I'm like young and like trying to get my feet wet and like jobs and stuff. It's like, you do not want to make people mad. If somebody is, you know, talking you up to somebody, you better, you better meet their expectations, if not exceed them. Like to me, you do not want to make that person mad that recommended you. 
even more so than like your new boss or, or your new supervisor, whatever the situation is, like, yeah, you don't, you want them to think of you in a positive light, but you really want the person that recommended you to feel confident that like they did that and like you are going to live up to what they said. Um, this goes into both ends of it, standing by your recommendations. So um, NF has a line in his song that says, um, if I say, I, I just tweeted it the other day. It's something like, if I say I respect you, or if I told you I respect you, I don't say it loosely. And I really, I really uh, live by that. Um, I feel like I live by that, but I didn't have a wording for it until I heard that song. But I really do. I have so many talented people in my circle that if someone was like, hey, I need this done, like, do you know anybody? Or even if I just heard someone like, yeah, I need someone to do this. That literally happened with like one of my good friends. Um, I'll shout him out. I don't know if he wants me to, but I will. Uh, I call him Jay Shades, but his name's Jason. And uh, <laughs> that literally happened um, at one of the jobs I was working at. Uh, my boss at the time was like, yeah, like I need someone who like does like websites. Like I'm getting all these contacts about like doing web development and website building. And I was like, oh, I know a kid. And like, yes, Jason is my friend, but I also know his work ethic and I know his ability to deliver on, you know, stuff like that. Like deliver like what he says he can do, he can do it. Like I know that 100%, I will back him all the time. I've, you know, recommended him for a couple jobs now and no one has said that they've had a problem as far as I know. Um, he's like great at what he does with web development and you know, I, I have so many people like that in my circle where it's like, oh, you need this. I'm going to recommend this person because I do not recommend somebody or hype somebody up if they do not deserve it. I do not give, like, I do not tell people or I don't tell other people that I respect somebody unless like I mean it. Um, you know, it, and it's to me, I guess in the way, way, way back of my mind, it is like, oh, I'm sticking my neck out for this person. They better be able to do this. But it is like, I truly believe in them. I think more than worrying about what other people think of me, if I say that this person's good at something, I truly believe that they are good at it. Um, the hard part about this, um, well, and so just going along with that before I switch gears, is standing by your recommendations. Um, the situation that got me thinking about this, I recommended someone close to me for something just to get the ball rolling. It wasn't even like, it wasn't like an official position. It wasn't anything crazy. And uh, the person that I recommended them to kind of came back and was like, hey, like they kind of sent me this thing um, as, you know, part of their portfolio. And I don't really think like they should send that. Um, you know, you need to be careful about who you're recommending because it could damage your reputation. And this is where I started thinking. So I hear what he's saying um, and that's fine. Everyone can have their own opinion. Obviously, like that job was not going to work between the two of them and that's okay. Like th that's totally fine. Um, but I replied to said message with the with the statement starting I stand by my recommendation I I could I I was I was worried like crap like this guy might know a lot of people like is is he gonna you know like tell other people now like I'm not trustworthy or I'm not credible or I'm this or whatever and yeah, that, that is a concern that definitely could happen. He could be like, yeah, like she recommended someone to me and like I, in his opinion, he didn't like what they did or their work or whatever, but it's like, yeah, he could easily tell someone that. But there again, I would hope that it would go back to, they would find out for themselves if that were really true or like what happened or, you know, know me, get to know me before they make the official judgment. 
Um, but I stood by my recommendation because I feel there again that you do not owe anybody anything. Um, you do not owe them an apology or an explanation. Um, you don't, you can give them one if you feel like that's what you should do or need to do, but you do not owe them one. And so I was not about to apologize or be like, you're right. Like I, like they're, you know, they're this or they're that, like I shouldn't have recommended them. No, like I know what they can do. I know their personality and their character. And I'm standing by my recommendation that they would be good for this position. If you don't think so, if they don't align and match with what you are looking for, that's totally fine. But that does not make me any less credible. That doesn't make them any less credible. Like I am standing by my recommendation. So I feel like just wrapping that whole spiel up about how a recommendation can affect a reputation on both sides. If you recommend someone, you need to stand by it. If you really believe that that person can deliver what they can deliver. Anyone can have their own opinion and they're entitled to it, but that doesn't always make somebody right. And that doesn't always mean that you have to feel like you're in a corner or in a tight space where you have to apologize. Um, or this person could then, you know, lessen their opinion of you and that could damage your reputation. And then on the flip side, if somebody recommends you, you, you better, you better live up to it because they're again, not only are you damaging your reputation, but then you could also damage the other person's. And so that's something like, I just want to think about too, um, for a minute is the fact of like, do you think this is kind of like a question. This is like an opinion. Um, cause I had an opinion, um, in my, in, in the person close to me that this kind of situation happened with, they had their opinion. I felt, and I still feel like if you recommend someone for something and they fail at whatever that is, that it can reflect poorly on you, that the person that you recommended them to, not that they're going to hate you or if you work for them, not that they're going to fire you, but the fact that the next time around, they are going to take what you say with an even bigger grain of salt and you have lost some credibility because if you said, oh, like, yeah, I know, you know, Billy Bob Joel and he is great at this and like, he'll do this job, like exactly what you need. He's like, you know, he's fair in his pricing, like whatever you say. And he, and you know, your boss or your friend, whoever uses Billy Bob Joel and he asks them for an outrageous amount of money and he only does half of the project and then he like doesn't return emails doesn't return calls you know like whatever happens you don't like i think that <laughs> that person you recommended him to is going to come back and look at you and be like nicole what the heck like i <laughs> you told me that they were going to do this 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 and this and now because of like because i went on your recommendation of their reputation i now got like screwed over um, or like the job didn't get completed to the standard I wanted or whatever that reflects poorly on you. Um, I think that that can easily lower your credibility to other people. And I think to a point in that situation where something like that didn't work out, I think it could kind of damage your reputation a little bit. There again, not necessarily your reputation as a worker as an employee, as a friend to that person, but your reputation in terms of recommending others um, for things, your credibility has been lowered. Um, the person close to me, like they were saying the opposite. They were saying, if you have a strong relationship with somebody and they either ask for your recommendation, like if you know anybody or, you know, if you just give it, and they decide to go with that person and that person doesn't deliver, he believes that you should not be held accountable for that. Um, believes that you, your reputation and your credibility should not be damaged because the other person didn't perform because they are their own person and you can't control what they do. And 
I, I kind of hear that and maybe agree with that a little bit, but I really feel like it could go either way. Um, like I said, either your credibility is going to be kind of knocked a little bit or that person could have the understanding of, hey, like I know you recommended this person because you saw them do this and they did it well then, but they didn't do that for me. Um, you know, and should that be held against you? Should that damage your working relationship or reputation with that person and how they refer to you to to others or what they tell others about you um it's like a it's a it's a tricky thing and i think it just depends on the person i think it does depend on how deep of a relationship you have with that person um how long you've known that person and what capacity to you know if a if a, re a recommendation of yours doesn't work out is that going to reflect poorly on you or not um because you can't you can't always control the other person like you know you might know them in this capacity and they might like i said have done it well before but that doesn't mean that when you recommend them they don't you know do something that the other person doesn't like or doesn't approve of or um it's not a good match so it's bound to happen um it, it's hard um and like i said you know people People change. I actually heard um, one of my friends was telling me that someone she knew was thinking about removing their recommendation um, off of somebody else's LinkedIn because, you know, like originally they wrote this recommendation thing like, oh yeah, like they have all these great like qualities and like, you know, they can do this and their and their work ethics like this or whatever it was. But then it was like as the months progressed and they actually were working alongside this person they were realizing like you know what no like they don't have they don't have what I thought I had or they don't have what I thought they had they're not behaving like I thought they'd behave they're not delivering on what they sold me um I and you know to defend that person's reputation they had to make the decision to remove their recommendation from this other person's LinkedIn and me and my friend both said like we think that's really fair because there again if she's saying on this person's linkedin you know like oh yeah they can do this 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 and this and then like you know an employer <laughs> came back or something and they're like oh what the heck like this chick said like she could do or she was like this but she wasn't like what was she like lying or she like was a friend so you know she wrote it for her like whatever and it could reflect poorly on that person that, you know, wrote that recommendation if it's not holding up, if it's not holding water. So I think, you know, like I said before, you don't always know right off the bat how somebody is, how they're going to behave. But in time, you kind of see, you know, true colors of what people are like. And you are there again. You don't owe anybody anything. And you are, you know, more, you are entitled to have your mind change or your opinion change. Whether it's like for a bad reason, like you're like, they're not what I thought they were. Or whether it's a good reason, like, oh man, like I thought that they were going to be like a slacker or like whatever bit. They actually like showed up, you know, did their part, contributed like, you know, in a good way. Um, I don't think it's ever bad to change your mind because people change people go through different stages of life and they they might be different in one versus the other um and there again like hopefully you hope that people grow and mature as they get older so i i don't think it's always good to hold things over people's heads um or bad mouth them necessarily like there again you never want to do that because it just makes you look <laughs> you know, just makes you look worse. Um, and one thing I learned when it comes to, you know, referrals, recommendations, reputation, the three R's, um, is the fact of you never know who knows somebody. You never know who knows somebody or you never know who knows something. So, you know, I have found, you know, especially like working for iHeart, um, you know, my boss told me this one story 
Like he could have easily, he was uh, talking to this girl like backstage at the show or something. And he was like, he's like, I could have, you know, if I had been feeling this way or wanted to been like, oh yeah, like this, this band sucks or like this guy, like he, he doesn't, he's not like a good singer, like whatever it was. And he found out like this girl ended up being this person's girlfriend. And he was like, can, like, can you imagine if I had said something like that to her, like my reputation, my relationship with those people, um, would have been like ruined, like right off the bat. And it's just, so it's like, you never know who somebody is, who somebody knows. So your, (laughs) your best case is to just, what you should do anyway, is to treat people kindly and, you know, be nice, hold your tongue. There again, unless you like know for sure you're talking to someone trusted in your inner circle and you know, you really need to vent or like talk something out with them about somebody else, like, and you can trust them. But you know, that's like on your own time. I would not do that at your job or, you know, whatever. Um, I would not recommend doing that because there again, I'm learning more and more. Everybody knows everybody. Um, even in a city like Cleveland, like, no, we're not, you know, Los Angeles, but everybody knows everybody. So it's just safer for you to, you know, do what you need to do, do it well, be friendly, be nice. Um, I think that that's how you're going to get ahead, um, in life and you want your reputation to be good, you know? Maybe that's something to stop and think about sometimes is if, you know, so-and-so met so-and-so tomorrow and they asked them about me, you know, like, what would they say? Is it going to be good or is it going to be bad? You know, and there again, everyone's going to have their own opinion of you and sometimes it's going to be negative, maybe even if you don't deserve it to, but that's just kind of how it is. And um, I think it's just accepting the fact of, everybody's not going to say the nicest things about you. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to agree with you and that's okay. But you need to be able to sleep at night knowing that you did what you could to, you know, do a good job or, um, to treat somebody kindly. You did what you could do. And in the end, that's all you can do and learn from the experience, grow from it. Um, you know, that's, these are things I'm like keeping in mind now because the situation occurred. So I'm like, oh, okay. Like, you know what? His advice wasn't wrong. You know, when he said to me like, Hey, you need to be mindful of like your referrals because it could affect your reputation. Like, yeah, that's, that's really, really true. It, It definitely can. And that's something like to keep in mind, that's a good piece of advice going forward. Um, but like I said, however, you don't owe anybody anything. And I, don't think you should ever feel like you have to apologize, um, for something or feel like you have to, um, relinquish your opinion, um, just to please somebody or make somebody else happy. And they don't like it. That's okay. You know? Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's all I got on this topic. I feel like I could probably easily do a part two on this. Um, maybe not now, but in the future, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions Uh, please make sure if you're watching this on YouTube that you subscribe if you do not already. I would love for you to leave a comment about this. Um, Something that happened to you, a a piece of advice that you have, if you agree with what I'm saying, if you disagree with what I'm saying. um, I would love to hear it because there's so many stories, I'm sure, of things like this that have happened. Um, And, you know, everyone has a different thought process and a a different uh, outlook on things. So I'd love to hear that. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this content. If you are streaming this podcast um, somewhere else like Spotify, iHeartRadio, please be sure to follow um, my podcast. Uh, listen to the other episodes if you're new. If you're new, thank you for listening. Um, if you're not new, thank you for listening. Um, I really appreciate you guys um, who listen to this week in and week out. Um, you guys are amazing and I love it. Um, if you have any other topics you want me to cover, I'm open, always open to suggestions of things to talk about and yeah, make sure you follow me on social media. That would also be awesome. Instagram, Twitter, 
Um, I guess Facebook, I don't use it that much though, but you can still follow me on there if you want. Um, yeah, so with that being said, I hope you guys have great weeks and we will see you again next time. Bye y'all.